And a very good morning to all and welcome to Safari TV. My name is Jared and I'll be presenting the morning drive today here at Safari TV with uh, Catherine on camera and Herman in final control directing. And uh, we're going to head out in uh, a very chilly and clear skied Sabi Sands here today. And uh, the weatherman said 90% chance of rain. Don't know where he got that from. Although I'm looking towards the west, towards the mountains. A little bit of cloud, but uh, nothing looking like that we're going to get any rain anytime soon today. But uh, yeah, stay with us for the next three hours. Let's see if we can find. And uh, let's have Mother Nature plays along with us. I'm just uh, getting emails coming through saying that there was a leopard at the dam last night calling. Sounded like uh, apparently a leopard went for the guinea fowl. And Herman was telling me that he saw Karula uh, just near Yuri's house last night, probably around about, what was that, about 8 o'clock, somewhere around there, and uh, heading towards the dam. So, for sounds like Karula. Had a bit of fun and she made her way past the guinea fowl when there, when there was still a bit of daylight left and perhaps she was clever enough to think, well, I'm going to wait till they've settled and wait till it's completely dark and uh, she'll give it a try. So I'm going to wait until uh, one of the Voyatella guys comes out and we'll go and have a look around Gauri Dam and see what we can find. I'm going to head down, follow us, cut down for a bit and go Weaver's Nest. Lots of mist around this morning, that's what there is a lot of. Mist everywhere around in low-lying areas. I'm looking around us. There's going to be quite a bit of moisture in the air. the boost of moisture. We'll go across towards Chelapan and we'll make our way up Vulture's Nest and hopefully Central Road, Gowry Dam. Initially when I heard that there was a leopard at the dam, I thought, ah, oh, one of the boys. But then I uh, heard that Karula was around Yuri's house a bit later. She obviously stuck around and within that very thick bush just uh, to the east of Inga and Yuri's house. And uh, marked the territory for a bit and that's what, uh, what a lot of you heard was that sawing it. Leopard territorial call. It's quite something to hear it. past uh, Yuri's house and uh, saw that the baboons were up in the trees. Looks like they'll only start coming down around about now. They only come down in daylight.
Jim Reeves. For the maintenance drivers. It's gonna go past the area where the lion, the buffalo kill was. As I had a look the other day. Nothing around there even any bones or scraps of skin that been left. Vultures and hyenas did well to clean up the area. I like to call them the housekeepers of the bush. Good morning my last session. That's apparently there was a uh, Karula again back at Gary Dam last night. Sounds like she won a Bamba Guinea Fowl, but uh, I'm going to have a look and wait till Bria Taylor comes up. Quite chilly here this morning. Quite chilly. Put the gloves back on, the big thick jacket on. And what looks like it probably will warm up if uh, for some reason the wind picks up. That's when the clouds will move in. That's when the rain will come. But uh, I find it hard to believe we're going to get any rain today. Otherwise, if it stays clear, it should warm up quite nicely. Very Big game yesterday. We were very, well, we were lucky to find a buffalo herd later on. And then Karula at 5:59 p.m. <laughs> that was quite interesting. 5:59 p.m. She shows herself rather, rather late than never. Eh? Rather late than never. We got to see her for about 15 minutes. Try and keep up with her through the bush. Some leopard tracks yet. So they are not very fresh. Heading back that way towards Funnel's cut line. But if there are any questions for us for the next three hours, please send them through to final control at safari.tv. Enjoy getting the questions coming through. Bush related questions, of course.
there's some uh, some hippopotamus tracks all over here. Chela Pan hippo tracks from here. I wonder if this is the male hippo that we believe is him go, but uh, it could possibly be another one doing his rounds looking for grass to feed at night. Chorus is starting. Yeah, brown hooded kingfisher. The Franklins are always vocal. We had a black headed oriole earlier. See some starlings are out and about. Hello Deb, Deb is just uh, inquiring as to what the differences are between a pan, a dam and a water hole, are they all the same? Pans are generally wallows and are much smaller than dams, dams are of course man-made water bodies by dam walls put in. So a dam is a larger water body more than a pan. A pan is uh, generally a smaller water body that often is uh, is made by started out by wallowing animals from a small little mud wallow to that eventually becomes a, a water filled area. And a water hole is just a, a local term here that we use for any any area that an animal can drink is a water hole. If it's got water, that's a water hole. I know that uh, for some of you a dam refers to the actual wall that is created. We call that a dam wall. They're just uh, different terminologies. And I guess you can also, hence why when we, when we talk about some animals, you know, things like lion, leopard, elephant, buffalo, rhino, you, know, you can't really mistake them. But then when you start getting to bird species, other animal species, you know, or, or even plant species, where in some areas they may have different names. And often uh, I may call uh, arch, you know, uh, uh, an apple leaf here in South Africa. I go up into Zambia. And I say, oh, I see there's the apple leaves are in flower. And they'll look at me and they say, what? What, what is that? They call it apple leaf a lilac tree. So Latin names are used. So it's just a, a matter of you know, just different terminologies in different areas and what have you. So we, what we call a dam, you might call a lake or whatever it may be.
that there are no scientific names for dams and lakes and heavy, but just to say, just to show you how there are differences in, in terms all over the world, and hence Latin names are used to avoid any confusion when it comes to different species, whether they animal or plant. Sure, look at all this thick mist. in the vehicle a bit so we can get the sun through there. Um, oh, there's a bit of an opening area here. Try and get the sun through the mist here. hardly even see the sun. You can look straight into the sun now. It's, uh, there's such thick mist. We need to find an animal lying in the mist. I'm breathing steam out of my mouth as I speak. Had a, an amazing sunset y yesterday afternoon. A beautiful sunrise, misty sunrise today. That's it. Oh wow. Look at that. We need now some elephants to move through the bush, silhouetted with the backdrop of the rising sun. Another great start to another day here in the Sabi Sands. One thing about this job, and I keep on saying the benefits of it, getting to see the sunrise and sunset every day. Not many people can say that. There's a lot of folks out there that go to work in the dark and come home in the dark and they don't ever get to see the light of day, work in an office or work underground or wherever or up after the sun rises and now indoors before the sun sets Apparently the two mating leopards headed south, the Chichitra Chichwa. Guys saw them there. Alrighty. Beautiful, absolutely beautiful. I'm not sure what movie it was, but the way it said, B E A U T I F U L. Visibility will be limited now for, for the first uh, few minutes. 
you stay along this uh, this belt, you can, you can see in about about 50 meters into the bush, and then uh, after that, if an animal's not moving, you're not going to be able to see anything. Chin spot batters, the call of the three blind mice. That's his call. Tiny little bird. Beautiful. Chin spot batters. Three blind mice. It's only the female that possesses the spot on the chin. The male lacks this. Aubrey's out and about. We can head out into Gary Dam now. Pavela, very good question Pavela, Pavela asking after seeing the scop cell last night, just a wondering as to why in most cases in raptors are the females larger than the males, often this is for, for nesting purposes and protection and for breeding, being able to, to breed It's not like there is a huge difference. Uh, and it's not like you can see, wow, look at that. That is crazy how big the female is compared to the male. No, not at all. The variances are very slight, but it is that the female is larger than the male. And that is particularly for being able to uh, cope with breeding and nesting. Although the male does tend to assist in that nesting female does the uh, majority of it. Wow, this mist is now very thick. You can hardly see anything in front of us. And you can see just the road here and nothing beyond it. Wow. What we term sexual dimorphism. Differences between males and females. Whether it be size, whether it be coloration, whether it be length of a tail or a crest or something else, or we term sexual dimorphism. You have to really slow down to and really look quite hard, otherwise it would be very easy to miss. Around us. Oh, nature is a wonderful thing. Something as simple as size within the female and uh, protection of the youngsters. Just amazing. Often the males are the ones that, especially in the smaller birds, with their little territorial calls. All this amazing behavior and adaptions of survival of the species. And we're out of the mist. Here at Giraffe Dip. <laughs>
Central Road and we're heading towards Gary Dam to follow up on last night's apparent leopard activity. Hearing a leopard sawing around the dam and hearing some guinea fowl that were being chased from their roost from what it's been described. We'll look for some feathers. to where we saw the guinea fowl nesting. Have a look around on the damn wall there. Let's keep an eye out for some uh, leopard tracks. She came down yesterday. She drank me. She came across the devil. Hello Leanne. Leanne says, are the roads here graded? Uh, they are. And they're only graded initially when the, when the roads are being made. And then after that, just to keep them in a decent state, uh, the roads are then dragged with, uh, with heavy old tractor tires. No sign of any, I see the guinea fowl just in front of the lodge. I'm not going to go in front of the lodge there, but I also see some buffalo around. So I'll go and have a look at some buffalo. But uh, yeah, um, yeah, yeah, the roads are, are just graded once. Um, and then they are dragged. And then they, they are scraped. In many different ways in order to maintain these roads. And scraped, what basically a, a tractor drags a little bucket, a little metal bucket that's got a basically like a blade a blade at the bottom and uh, often this happens during the dry season of course when it's dry often corrugation occurs all the dust in the vehicle is driving in the rain often you uh, the roads are hardened anyway but uh, yeah, during the dry season, the roads are then uh, dragged and graded and scraped, but uh, only graded once, and that's when they get made. No sign of any leopard yet. No feathers anywhere. Looks underneath the tree. Nothing there. So there's some buffalo lying down just to the north of. Yeah, yeah. I'll take him Vulpa Road and we'll head up north. 
all these roads or most of these roads in our area are what we call C class, different grading that you get, A class, B class, C class. Minimum of C class roads when it rains, and then B class you're looking at capped roads, so roads that have got a lot of gravel that have been compacted into the road so that uh, they maintain during the rainy season. That's a B class road, it's a very high quality road, that's very good. Everyone would love to have B class roads within, with all the, all the concessions, but unfortunately, it's not financially viable and it costs quite a bit. And, in the using of tractors and graders and all those things. Yeah, that's on the Shambinyati. the nose of the vehicle in to have a look at them. There's a bit of a track here leading in. Mampripan Slambi Nyati Stashmi Lalapanzi Garida. Malo, if we pronounce it correctly, Malo, Malo, uh, asking the, the lions that were feeding on the buffalo, are they still around or uh, are they following that large herd? Um, Malo, yeah, it's, it's difficult. Um, the, the big males haven't been seen um, since they left that buffalo kill. I know part of that kill, what we call the Kahuma Pride, they were up in the north, up in Biffletook, on another buffalo kill and they left yesterday um, yesterday morning sometime but uh, the males they haven't been seen and I mean that's that's not unusual because the males are the ones that often <coughs> you know end up walking around on the boundaries to the territory protecting the, the residents the females and, and the youngsters that occupy the territory within um, so those males could be walking around quite far from the rest of the her rest of the, the pride which we know up in Bifflesuk, but we don't know where they are exactly. Um, and the Sticks Pride, we haven't heard about also since uh, since they left. But uh, yeah, I mean these these lions do end up, they can walk up to 30 kilometers in one night if they really need to. Apparently, um, one of the guys found two tracks, two male lion tracks heading towards the buffalo carcass up in the north. So that could be the Kahuma males uh, going to investigate and joining up with the rest of the pride. That would be, would seem to be the most viable possibility. But it's these guys in front of us, these buffalo, that. Uh, that are in the most sort of line of fire being you know, they tend to rest up most of the day in these thickets here around water and uh, very unsuspecting of predators and although they're big and, 
and bulky and uh, potentially very dangerous. They are not as alert as a lot of the buffalo that, are, that occupy the large herds. The large herds has lots of numbers to look out for predators. We're here, there's only what, one, two, three, four, five, six, six buffaloes here. And uh, every now and again, they tend to fragment and one goes his own way. And that's when they get picked off pretty quickly. They're not as energetic, shall we say, as the younger ones in the herds. Hence why they're in a bachelor group or on their own. The Dugger Boys. We might actually go and, and help out because apparently lion tracks all over towards Tamboti Dam. That's uh, that's pretty close to Mvubaro uh, Junction. Hmm. Can I go shortcuts all between that area? Let's hope they come south. Let's we'll go and investigate after this. See if there's lion tracks crossed down. Oh, that'll be great. Yeah, from Aldu Mbubu Road, I'm just here with that uh, Tlamenyati. I'll take Mbubu Road and uh, come and assist uh, f f on Western Gary side. This line track on Galaga a shortcut heading north though. It's the only thing if they head if they've headed north, they could be already be in Buffelsook and they aren't the tracks on Galaga shortcut, so not a not a lot of room to move around without heading north. Haven't heard any lions calling of late. So they're not making themselves known when they come in. These guys are probably not going to be doing too much while it's still nice and cool here. They can sleep out in the open. If it does get warmer today, they might head down into the water's edge, lie around there. They all seem to be ruminating. They've probably just started resting now after last night's feeding. Okay, shall we go and give a hand on uh, um, Vuba Road and go and have a look around? Wish us luck, wish us luck. Hopefully the line tracks now cross east towards uh, where we are, between 
Graham and Warren's house. That's exactly where it, it, the final control is. Herman, you didn't hear any lions last night, huh? Yes. We need to keep our eyes peeled here on Wolver Road for any lion tracks. Because the lion tracks cross straight through to the Apparently, the four Machinga lines are in the west, possibly by Arethusa somewhere or Simbambili. Just hearing an update from a voice I don't recognize on the radio. I see one of the other guys from the west. So it sounds like it's the Kahuma males. Funny how we're talking about them and the tracks just pitch up and are heading in this direction. Oh man, what I'd do to find the Kahuma males again. Those guys were beautiful. Also keep up and see what's, uh, how that uh, older one's leg is doing. Last we saw of it, he was putting some weight on it. And there's buffaloes here at the dam. Could be something. Oh, this could be something happening in the next day or so. And Kahuma's like buffaloes, apparently. lying in the middle of this block and you know this we could always try that two track that heads behind camp we'll have to see I'll maybe just speak to Ephraim Ephraim um, do you think it would be possible if we check that uh, two track uh, that heads uh, from the fire break all the way through to behind uh, Graham's Kaya there maybe you have a look around there Number 